It's our pleasure today to partner with the Honorary Consulate of Liberia in Minnesota in a new program for us, a town hall, where we're presenting a number of different organizations' work connecting Minnesotans with Liberia and Liberia with Minnesota. Our partner today is the Honorary Consul Jackson George of Liberia. Uh, his amazing work in our region is something we're proud and very, very excited uh, to partner with. And we've had a number of opportunities to partner over the last few years. And so I'd like to um, welcome to the screen Honorary Consul Jackson George to give us an overview of uh, the activities of the consulate, of the embassy in Washington as well, and to give us a sense of how he sees the opportunities in the future for us to deepen the already deep and very personal ties that we have now. Thank you again, Consul General Jackson George, and please join me on the screen. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. So good morning. Uh, I bring you greetings from the Liberian Ambassador accredited near Washington, D.C., His Excellency George Patton Sinyon, who could not be here today. As you are all aware, the global pandemic continues to affect the world's economy. Healthcare systems are being tested. The glo global death rate has passed 5 million. Food security is at risk. Inequality reigns, and the global transportation has slowed. Liberia, still recovering from its 14 year civil war, has its own challenges due to the pandemic. This is reminiscent of the Ebola that affected and devastated our country and economy and killed thousands of our people. While we have some challenges, there are people like you who, despite all the odds, find ways to lend a helping hand to our homeland. I am very extremely pleased to Honorable Mark Riches, President of Global Minnesota and his team for planning and fully executing such a forum on Liberia. This is a clear indication that Global Minnesota considers the global world irrespective of a country size and country economy's bandwidth. To the panelists, on behalf of the Ambassador, the President and Government of Liberia, we want to thank you for your continuous work in helping humanity in Liberia. There are more like you out there doing your best to assist in Liberia. I want to assure you that my office is always available and willing to assist you in navigating the process in Liberia. The Liberian Consulate in Minnesota is a part of Liberia's foreign mission, worked under the Liberian Embassy and taxed with the responsibility to advance the interests of the Liberian government and people, protect the rights of Liberians in the United States and attract investment and goodwill to the homeland. I am sure that you are aware of the public-private partnership portal, the LIPSEC.org. The Liberian Ambassador is leading the diaspora coordination. USAID has offered $4.6 million of marching funds, and all of you, all of your contributions and work can be enhanced by taking advantage of this marching fund. So finally, Today's dialogue is a true reflection and representation of our desire to see Liberia's connected to Minnesota, but more importantly, to the global world. I can only thank you and on behalf of the people, of the Liberian people, let's connect, let's share resources, let's help change the world. Honorable Mark Riches, let the conversation begin. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. Thank you very much, Consul General, and thank you for all of your support, all that you do for our community in Minnesota, but um, for the world itself. And so today is, a, is just the next step in that process. I'd like to move to our first presenter. Each only has two and a half for three minutes, so we'll be quick, but we will get a very exciting view of key things happening connecting our two communities. Dennis Garcini is our next guest. Please join me on the screen, Dennis. Thank you, Mark. I, I want to first thank you for your work, and I also want to thank you for the uh, invite. Uh, my work in Liberia uh, started, like I said earlier, uh, back in 2009, and we have been um, focusing on several areas of, 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 uh, of, of uh, 
assistance to Liberia. We started with healthcare, and um, in 2009, we were able to ship some medical supplies there. Uh, that increased in volume in the past three years. We are now shipping around uh, six to eight containers a year. Uh, we are also involved with our food assistance to our orphanages that are operating in Liberia, uh, mainly in rural Liberia, and at the same time helping girls uh, that are interested in uh, reusable pads. Uh, last month, we were able to raise some money to get them started so that they can produce their own pads locally in Liberia. And, and uh, that has been a tremendous effort that we started uh, we hope to continue that with them. But again, uh, the empowerment of our uh, health system in Liberia has been our main goal, and we intend to continue on that path. Thank you for the opportunity, and we hope to work with you from here on. Thank you very much. And um, we will be providing to those of you who've registered for this call, contact information and ways to be in touch with organizations that you would like to follow. But also, of course, you can find them through the website, through their Facebook and other things. But this was a, a really great opportunity to hear about one of the programs that's really come alive over this past few years. Dr. Mark Holder is our next guest. Mark, please join me on the screen. Thank you. Ready to go. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, um, Mark, for inviting me. I, I think this forum is very good. And um, clearly, I think technology is actually um, it's the key, I think, for, for those countries and those communities that, that want to kind of leapfrog um, in advancement. I think technology is the key. And I mentioned before that um, I'm running an independent medical practice here. And the re reason why I think that it's worth it to mention this is during this pandemic that we've been, people have been dealing with the COVID infection, et cetera. Much of healthcare has actually closed down. And people have been afraid to go to big um, healthcare institutions to seek medical care for acute care or for any reason for that matter. But what I want to mention is because of the, type of practice I have. And the way my practice works is, you know, it's a subscription model, kind of like a gym membership, and people pay a certain amount a month and they have access to care, and that includes telecare. And the reason why I'm mentioning that is because I have been able to treat and manage patient, patients with COVID infections, more than 30 patients, through telemedicine, where I've not seen the patient physically, I haven't touched them, but I've been able to evaluate their symptoms through video or phone. I've been able to send their prescriptions to the pharmacy that I want them to take. They've been able to receive the therapies. Maybe a friend or family member has picked up that medicine and taken it to the patient. And all the patients are doing well, 100%. Not one patient has been hospitalized and not one patient um, has not been improving from the therapy. I, I thank God for that. But I also think that with COVID virus, the important thing is early therapy. It means recognition and therapy. And I mentioned my practice to say that I've been doing all of what I'm doing through telemedicine and I haven't been there. Now, systems can be set up in, in a similar way in Liberia where you have uh, perhaps a location that has electric and Wi-Fi 24 hours, and when you have that connected to people that are anywhere in the world, and those people that are anywhere in the world can still evaluate patients through telemedicine in the same places, uh, the hubs where you have electric um, and Wi-Fi, you can store medication. So the person that is, that is remote can also say, I want this patient to have this, and I want this patient to have this, and I want this patient to have this. Now, I think that um, th there's huge possibilities in healthcare and to kind of up the healthcare ante um, in Liberia by doing that. I mean, also, I think that the healthcare industry in Liberia has to focus on the very fundamentals of health, you know, water sanitation, um, nutrition, and all those other social determinants of health. But I really think that we can do some very interesting things if we, if groups of people put their minds on utilizing technology 
for improving health outcomes. Thank you very much. And thank you for your service to our whole community and your use of these new innovations to help us share those skills and those special uh, services more broadly. Uh, Dr. Wilhelmina Holder, please join me on the screen. Thank you, Mark. I'm really excited to be on this panel and I look forward to working with Liberia in a great way. I'm Wilhelmina Talbot Holder. I came here um, after the coup d'etat in, in 1985 through the Hubert H. Humphrey Fellowship Program. That's Minnesota invited me to come and get a, a management and a healthcare degree at the University of Minnesota, first through the Humphrey Institute, and I got my master's in uh, epidemiology. But through this time, I was completely um, engaged and I wanted to return to Liberia. I couldn't because of the Civil War. And I've been here for 35 years, but during this time, I've been very busy organizing a nonprofit organization that was helping foreign physicians and foreign uh, trained doctors and nurses get recertified to practice their profession here in Minnesota, as well as to make sure that they contribute to the community and diversify the health workforce to reach all the immigrants and refugees that need culturally appropriate physicians and nurses to better serve them and provide them health equity and decrease the health disparity in Minnesota. I'm so excited that this program has advanced. We, went, we actually advocated at the legislature level and we got an, uh, a, a bill passed and now this project is being funded through funding from the Minnesota Department of Health. We have a new, my organization I work with now is New Americans Alliance for Development. This organization help, has helped over 300 doctors and nurses get recertified. We are so excited and we look forward to a day when some of our doctors might be able to work with telemedicine in Liberia. And I myself am looking forward to working in Liberia in the near future. I've been there several times over the years on a mission trip and also working with uh, the community in um, Bentor and Crosserville. And I see myself collaborating with all various agencies, with all professions from all over Liberia in the diaspora to return to Liberia, either physically or via Zoom or somehow the other contributing our, our skills that we have and sharing it with Liberians, people who have not had the opportunity as we have. And we all have skills and we all would like to assist our country to develop. We really want to lift Liberia high so that we can get to the level that we should be. Looking forward to working with everybody in the diaspora as we develop our country in a unique way. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Holder, and thank you for a life of public service here and around the world. And so we're um, so excited that there's been great progress on the projects you've been engaged in, and we know there's a lot more to do. So uh, thank you for joining us here today. Uh, next, I'd like to call on Patrick Polanski from Books for Africa. Patrick, join me on the screen. Hello, thank you, Mark, and uh, hello, everyone. Um, thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Uh, Books for Africa is the world's largest shipper of books to Africa. We have sent over 48 million books and uh, served every single country on the African continent over the last 32 years. So we're actually going to send our 50 millionth book um, by the end of this year. So we're very excited about that. We're proud of that, that we've shipped books to every single country in Africa, including Liberia. And I've had the pleasure of visiting Liberia several times over the years uh, to visit on book projects and we tend to work with members of the diaspora community uh, in all the countries we work with. So uh, 
I would say to my friends in the Liberian diaspora, uh, we at Books for Africa would be pleased to work with you to organize a book shipment to Liberia. The way our system works is the folks who are um, interested in sending books, they raise the funds and sometimes we're able to help with that. And then they um, indicate where the book should be sent. And so uh, they determine uh, how the project works. Over the last 32 years, we have sent over 2 million books to Liberia valued at over $4 million. So that's about 94 40 foot sea containers that have been sent. Every 40 foot sea container is about 20 tons of books. Our first shipment was in 1991 to the Catholic Relief Services Organization. And our last shipment was in January of this year uh, to an, uh, through an organization called Keep Liberia. Our biggest project was 28 shipments under a USAID project in 2007 that was over a million books that were sent. And uh, our next shipment, we're working on a project right now to send a container of books in either this month or probably next month to Monrovia. That container shipment is funded by a donor out of North Carolina. It'll be about uh, 30,000 books valued at uh, about $250,000 and that's 20 tons of books. So that's how we work, and um, we'd be pleased to work with whoever wants to work with us to get more books to Liberia and to make sure that they're high-quality books, that they're useful, and uh, that, that's an important element. We don't want to just send things that are convenient for us to send. We want to send things that are very helpful and useful to, for the schools, libraries, and universities across Liberia. Thank you. Thank you, Patrick. And I know from hearing from people in Africa that your specialized libraries, your human rights law and legal libraries, your medical and health and wellness libraries also have a huge impact and um, their re impact reverberates around the world. So congratulations and thank you for your work and for joining us here today. I'd like to ask Paul Ostro from CAS Liberia to join me on the screen. Uh, hello, Mark. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for doing this, Mark. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, so I am the board chair of uh, Minnesota Friends of CAST Liberia. Uh, there is uh, the primary organization, uh, CAST, uh, is a uh, recognized uh, NGO. Uh, in Liberia, uh, and I'm excited to share with you that uh, the mission of CAST is really the transformation of the lives of, of uh, women and girls and the empowerment of women and girls in Liberia, and specifically in the rural areas of Liberia. And uh, uh, very exciting to us because we did receive a grant from uh, Grace University Lutheran Church, which is uh, uh, my church uh, to provide to Jesse and, and uh, Jesse King, Reverend Jesse King, who's a wonderful man, is the one leading this effort. Uh, he, he just had his first classes and seminars this past week, so we were able to watch some of those videos and see some of those uh, photographs of the work that he's doing. So the hope is that through this pilot project, uh, uh, we will show the importance of this work and hopefully grow support for it. And uh, really the principle being that if anyone looks at uh, development throughout the world, it's when uh, women uh, especially are empowered, uh, being a tremendous engine. Um, and uh, that's really what Jesse is looking uh, to do. So uh, my sister Laurel and I were honored to go to Liberia um, in December of 2018. Uh, and she continues to be a partner as others are uh, with this, this effort. Um, and the last comment I will make about Books for Africa is that uh, shortly before the pandemic started, uh, I met with Lane Ayers uh, and uh, talked about a possible shipment to Liberia that might include uh, their law school, which was one of the very first, as I understand it, uh, to be provided books. Uh, uh, so very honored to be a part of this panel and, and to uh, I'm very thankful, Mark. You've been so incredibly supportive of 
Reverend King and, and everything that everyone's trying to do. Thank you, Paul. And, and um, I want to come back uh, after we hear from our friends from the Loon, because I know you had an important role to play in connecting the Loons and Liberia. So we'll come back to that. Samuel Sampson is a representative from the Liberian Nurses of Minnesota. Samuel, please join me on the screen. Great, great. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us here today. Indeed, indeed. Thanks for having me. And please okay. share with us your story and your connections and how the larger community can be supportive for your organization and the work that you're doing. Thank you, thank you. Again, thanks for having me. Uh, I, I represent the uh, Liberian Nurses Association of Minnesota. Uh, that organization was actually uh, established uh, for the purpose of uh, creating a platform for Liberian nurses to promote the health of the community through outreach, education, advocacy, uh, social empowerment, and collaboration with other healthcare organizations uh, for societal uh, advancement. Uh, the goal of the organization, again, uh, is to collaborate with other healthcare organizations to utilize the knowledge and expertise for health promotion and uh, community enrichment. Since our uh, establishment, uh, we were able to provide um, um, free flu shots to just people in the community who otherwise didn't have the opportunity of, of, of having uh, getting flu shots. We've done that for over uh, two years uh, now. We were able to partner with uh, a Fairview Health System who were able to provide the uh, flu vaccines and then have nurses from the Library and Nurses Association administer uh, those flu vaccines to patients and, uh, you know, folks out in the community. Um, you know, um, Liberia, uh, uh, you know, has, has significant needs uh, for the overall health of just those folks in Liberia. And, and so one of our goals also is to see how we can reach out, uh, you know, to the, uh, the, the healthcare teams in Liberia that is actually run by the government to see how we can look at their processes, look at what they're doing, and see how we can contribute so that, uh, you know, the health care of just those folks who are in Liberia to uh, is addressed. So those were some of the concerns that this organization has been looking forward to. Uh, I know I did hear a colleague on, on the uh, call earlier who did uh, mentioned something about telehealth and I think that would be significant to see hopefully we could you know use our expertise to uh, you know help folks back in Liberia to telehealth as well. Great thank you so much uh, and thank you for making that connection because our doctors our nurses our healthcare providers um, do have expertise that's very special and this new technology allows us to put those together in ways that are, um, you know, Im were impossible before. So I'll look forward to seeing how those conversations deepen. Our next guest is Will Smith um, from LEAD and uh, Will joins us from a long ways away and we're so grateful you could be with us here today. Thank you, Will, and please join me on the screen. Thanks for having me, Mark, and thank you to everyone uh, for this wonderful event. So uh, my name is Will Smith. I'm the co-founder and executive director of LEAD Monrovia Football Academy. Uh, it's the first school in Liberia to combine high quality education with elite sport training. We opened in 2015 um, in rented facilities in central Monrovia. My co-founder, Sekou de Georges Manuba, is a former Liberian national team player. Uh, we had actually met two years prior when I was in Liberia for research purposes. That's how all this started. Um, and what the academy does, we've grown from initially one academic class, 27 students, 16 boys, 11 girls, to in the past five years, we've had over 9,000 applicants. We've grown from those 27 to now, for the upcoming school year, we'll have 135 students representing 10 of Liberia's 15 counties. 
Um, and we've been operating in rented facilities. We've been operating actually in Konola Academy's facilities in Konola, Liberia, just north of Kakata. Uh, but we're actually in the process of building our own campus in Carysburg, just near the Fendel campus. Um, and right now it's grades three through nine, ages eight to 16. Um, and so what the academy does is it's a leadership incubator. Football is the hook. Uh, the kids do play football at the academy every day, but it's not the outcome that we seek. The outcome we seek is the future leaders of Liberia, whether as doctors or engineers or businesswomen or whatever it might be. Um, and so our kids, you know, they live with us, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, full-time academic classes. We're a registered school with the Ministry of Education. Uh, we have a STEM course, we have a leadership course, there's a variety of different pieces of, of the work that we do. Um, and our model was really on display last year in Minnesota, oh. um, thanks in large part to Minnesota United and also the Liberian community in Minnesota, uh, when 14 of our girls from our U15 uh, football team traveled from Liberia to Minneapolis to play in the Target USA Cup. And um, you've likely heard about it if you were in the community because it was a pretty amazing uh, experience. And our girls, they were the first Liberian women's team of any age ever to win an international tournament. They went and won the tournament um, and really showcased their spirit and their warmth and their intelligence along the way. And so, uh, yeah, our vision is, is to empower the future leaders of the country um, who will then go on and impact millions of people themselves. So, um, we're very grateful for where we are. We're going to keep going um, and we hope to hear from you. Thanks. Thank you very much. And um, this whole um, way that we've been able to touch different parts of the world, uh, always there's a backstory. And I want to come back to one of the backstories about that amazing visit uh, by those girls. And uh, I know all of us want to make sure that we're able to take that forward uh, when the COVID situation uh, makes this safe again. I now want to invite Janelle Flomo and Eb Flomo from uh, Help Encourage Liberia's Little Ones to join me on the screen. Thank you, Mark, and thank you to Global Minnesota for hosting us today. We are Janelle and Eb Flomo. Uh, we are married and we founded Help Encourage Liberia's Little Ones that was founded in 2003, right after the end of the war. And from there, we started a humanitarian um, organization where we would really try to help children remember to play and to be involved with their community again. And so um, since that time, we've more turned towards education as we're both educators. And we have worked with Books for Africa. We have sent over 44,000 books, and these were textbooks. So we hand selected most of those books and we, we brought them over to Liberia. We met them there and we distributed to 27 different schools and universities. We also partnered with um, Gathering Together and we built the largest playground in Liberia up in Lofa County. We encourage children to play and to be active and to learn social skills in that way. Um, now we're turning more towards community develop development along with our education. So we also have a study center in Liberia. Um, we've supplied books there also, and we have a little library. Um, the students will go there after their classes and um, be able to read independently and also to have a safe place to study, especially at night because we do provide electricity for them there. Um, because we're very much involved in community development, helping parents now is where we're focusing also so that they can help the children and pay for their school fees. And so we also have a business organization over in Liberia called Abjel Flomo Legacy Enterprise. And we have large lot of land and we decided to plant cocoa. And so we're hiring um, many different people and giving contracts this way. And so I'll let Eb talk about our cocoa plantation and our hospitality. So, okay, the, um, the second part of what we do um, is the business part, the for-profit part, and that is the Elp Job from a legacy enterprise. And as the name implies, Elp, that's me, Joe, that's Janelle, and we want to leave a legacy in Liberia. So we have this, uh, in 2015, we started a cocoa farm in Liberia, and now we have more than 100,000 cocoa trees. And this uh, has provided opportunity for employment for the, for the people in the community there. And we've employed over 
I mean, at one time we have about 20, 23 people living and working on the farm. So they live there, we feed them, we uh, lodge them, and then they work, they, they go to work. So we do that. And the second part of uh, Elbjörg Flumber Legacy of Enterprise is we have uh, a hospitality business. We have a guest house in Lofa County, Zaza Lofa County, and we also are building a hotel. So we want to bring development up in the interior. And those of us that have been to Liberia know that most of the uh, action is just centered in Monrovia. So we want to decentralize and go to, uh, to the interior part of the country and make it attractive to people. So, and all about providing employment for people, about helping people in the community. And eventually we, we also want to build a school there. Thank you. Fabulous. Thank you so much. And thank you for all you've done. And you're going forward with these exciting plans. So this is really great to be able to understand and see this larger picture. I next want to call on Elijah Zina, Partnership for Community Transformation. Elijah, please join me on the screen. Great. Welcome. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm already excited to be a part of this uh, conversation today. And most of the speakers, I'm kind of familiar with them. Like they just, um, and the speaker, Ebenezer, his wife, and Honorable Jackson George, Mr. Dennis, and, uh, and others who spoke previously. And so I'm from Partnership for Community Transformation. It's a sister program in Minnesota that's working with um, Center for Changing Lives Liberia. So Center for Changing Lives Liberia is a program that we support in Liberia. And this program in Liberia is located in Bangabon County. And our primary goal is to help Liberia less fortunate children, children who lost their parents to Ebola, HIV, and AIDS, and the Liberian Civil War. Like others have said, Liberia is a little country that have experienced a lot of um, situations that have left a lot of people um, in situations that rated on life unbearable. So Center for Changing Life Liberia is providing primary education to less fortunate Liberian children. And we are also providing vocational training so these children, we provide health care for them, and we also provide home care for them in Liberia. Um, Philip Nushin is the CEO in Liberia running this program. And Partnership for Community Transformation serve as the arm to raise funds to, to continue to support this program in Liberia. So the whole... Um, Say, uh, the whole mission started and uh, program started in 2016 and when we first started up with 15 kids and up to now we have like 60 children that we have in school and we are providing both primary and vocational uh, training to and we are hoping to increase the number just January December of last year in January of this year we had a partner from, like, from, from Minnesota going over to Liberia to kind of provide um, uh, social, psychosocial support for these kids just to let them know that there are people in the diaspora that are thinking about them. And like Paul right this year, I also have an affiliation with, 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 with CAS Liberia. I serve on the Friends of CAS Bowl in Minnesota also. So we have all of these uh, connections in Minnesota trying to help the children in Liberia. Like the previous speaker said, um, most of the programs in Liberia are kind of centered around Monrovia, and Monrovia is so overcrowded. So most often people tend to forget about what's happening in the rural area of the country. So that's, that's one of the main reasons why Center for Changing Life chose Center Liberia in order to, 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 to cater to the children in that region. So we want to have kind of like an inclusive, uh, inclusiveness in our caregiving and our service delivery. So we can, everybody can now focus in the city and why we have other people in the rural area 
that 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 need the same help that the kids in Manuria needs also. So Center for Changing Lives in Liberia is doing that right now. Um, this year, because of the Ebola, uh, most of our funding went towards providing food uh, for our children that we support in Liberia. Because we, our long-term goal is to have a shelter, a home that we can host our children in and have our counselor there. But well, for now, we don't have our own home yet, so we are kind of attending to these kids at the caregiver's home. So we have counselors that goes around to these homes, making sure that these children have been taken care of in the way that they should. So we provide health care, home care, and food and other things for them while they are living with their caregivers. So in a nutshell, that's what uh, Partnership for Community is doing along with Center for Changing Lives like you. And thank you for having me. Well, thank you, Elijah. And of course, this is one thing that we in Minnesota could be learning from Liberia is the importance of not just focusing on that big metro, the Monrovia, the Twin Cities, but to make sure that the whole, the whole countryside, the whole community, the whole neighborhood broadly defined is getting attention and is getting care. And so I was so grateful that you brought that out um, and that your organization is being one of the models of thinking out into the rural area and the countryside. And we need to do that in Minnesota as well. So we've had the opportunity to hear from a few organizations and some uh, uh, opportunities for people to connect and, and things that could be put together, some ideas, maybe some sparks of new ways of connecting. I want to uh, just give a shout out to all of the groups and organizations that are not here today, but we hope to hear from you uh, so that we can do more of these town halls and more organizations can get the kind of publicity, can get the kind of, uh, you know, public information out to people, um, you know, that we had a chance to do today. But we also have the opportunity today to, um, you know, see how we can look into the future. And I wanted to see if our Honorable Jackson George would like to give us a little peek into the future of things that we might be looking out for uh, in the coming months, in the coming year, uh, from the embassy in Washington, from the consulate here, uh, from Monrovia. Uh, Honorary Council, could you join me again here on the screen? I think, thank you, uh, Mike. I think, um from the embassy point of view, for those who are having uh, organizations and working in Liberia, we are issuing visas here that makes it easier for you to uh, send your books to Washington DC or New York. We are doing that right now. For those Liberians who are passports have expiring, we are working on the process to, to have a biometric system in the, at the consulate here so that you don't have to travel to DC or New York to do your biometrics for your renewal or for your passports. I also want to encourage all of the organizations out there to, to register with the consulate so that uh, sometimes uh, we are doing things in silos. Uh, if we co coordinate our efforts and, and, and work together, sometimes it makes it easier to navigate the system back home. That is why the consulate is here, the embassies are here, please use the embassies and the consulates to be able to let us know what you're doing in Liberia and how we can help to, uh, to help you uh, do some of the things that you wanna do in Liberia. It's difficult. Uh, Liberia is, is a small country. Uh, there's a lot of needs, but if we coordinate our efforts and we work together and understand what we're doing like today forum, many of the things that you're doing in Liberia, we need to know them so that we can all uh, make it happen. Uh, I know the ambassador is leading our diaspora group. We meet uh, twice a month to talk about what uh, organizations are doing and how we can coordinate our efforts to ensure that uh, uh, humanitarian uh, uh, relief is reaching Liberia. Your organizations are not going through a lot of difficult times in terms of getting uh, stuff to Liberia. And so the, the, the consulate and the embassy can help you in those, in those uh, instances. So please contact us. Uh, please work with us 
uh, register your business. We have our website. You can go on our website and register your business uh, so that we know you, you're there. And whenever you are uh, sending things to Liberia, let us know so we can help you through the process if we need to. Great. Incredible services, but also uh, incredible dynamic community. And of course, we all celebrated this last year when we made a little progress in Washington on some of the issues and particularly visa issues and other things. But what we know is that it's by collaborating, cooperating, partnering, that's the way of the future. And you guys are teaching us all about how that is and how to make that work. And I'm just so grateful to, um, you know, have that inspiration here in our state. Any last words for before we tie ourselves up here and head out, Honorary Consul? Well, I, I want to say thank you to, to you and Global Minnesota. The work that you do to connect us. Uh, Liberia is one of the smallest countries in, in Africa. And the, the fact that Global Minnesota can work with us irrespective of our size or our economy. That shows how much you are doing in the state and how much we need to be connected. Uh, we have a long history. I'm not going to recount that. But I think with the help of uh, the exposure that you've given us and with all of these uh, panelists who are doing so much in Liberia, I want to say thank you. There are others in the, in the state and in the, in the country who are also doing things Please connect, let us start uh, a process of uh, coordinating our efforts so that uh, the impact can be greater than individual impact. And I, I'm happy to help. I'm happy to be a part of that. And thank you again, Global Minnesota. Thank you, Mac Riches, for your efforts and your leadership in this effort. Thank you. And thanks to everyone who joined us today over on YouTube or on Zoom. And thanks to all the panelists. You'll be hearing from us more and stay tuned. There'll be more town hall meetings about Liberia and other countries. Thank you again to the staff of Global Minnesota for making this all happen and have a good day. Bye now.